All right, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have all of your tools. So we got a tape measure, hammer. I don't know that we'll ever need it. We got levels, markers to be able to mark the back of the stone where we need it cut, pencils, and we got a couple other levels. It's always easier if you lay out your area, what you're working on. And since these are all color coded, what we did was on this side of the table are all the corner pieces laid out by color. And these are all the flat pieces laid out by color. And then we organized them so we can see what the different colors look like in correlation with the colors on the back. So it's really nice Aristone had done this because it makes it a lot simpler to be able to know where you want each piece to go and how it'll look good. We also have a spacers, a little series of spacers because we don't want to go all the way to the floor. We're putting a kick plate in this bar so that everything is nice and level to start that first course. So that's my advice to you. This is the first time we're doing anything like this and we plan on doing more of it if it's as simple as everyone says it is. So. Uh, stay tuned, we'll be doing more. All right, we got our corner started. And I think it's looking pretty good. As you notice, I made sure to keep um, any of the, of the glue off the face of the bricks, because if you do it while it's still wet, it's a whole lot easier. And also I clean off any excess stuff that smushes up at the top. Um, so that way our course, if we get pulled away for any reason, it doesn't um, congeal there and, and screw around with our um, level. Everything here on this corner is perfectly level. We're going to go off to that far corner over there and do the same and then we'll go start the bottom course and meet in the middle. Okay, we got the other end done, the other corner piece. Looks good. And if you notice, we went ahead and just used some of these blocks of wood that we had to as a way of keeping our um, first course straight while it dries. Once it's dried, then we'll be fine. But we just want to make sure that we don't let it sag and lose any of the nice uh, crispness that we have of the level. Because right now everything is perfectly level. We're really pleased with how easy this is to use. Seriously, this is just so aesthetically pleasing and just really easy to use. I can't say how much uh, thought has gone into this product to, to make it dummy proof. Trust me, we're a couple dummies and <laughs> it's easy for us. So um, we're going to start that bottom course and we'll be back in a little bit. The first course is officially done and I think it looks fan freaking tastic. It really is easy to use and we kept everything really level. So cutting was not as hard as I thought it would be because I have somebody doing it for me, so that's easy. Um, but yeah, uh, that's what it looks like so far. Course one done. Before I forget, this is how much of the um, compound adhesive that we've used to, to current so far. So to do the corners here all the way over and then that first course, that's how much we've used. So not too bad. I think the bucket's going pretty good. Okay, so we're done for the day for now. Uh, three hours, I think, is what it took us to do this bit all the way over to these ends. Um, as you can see, we have some spacers in there, but all in all, it looks pretty good. The main thing is take your time, keep your work area clean. If you notice, I don't have any schmutz on the top that's going to end up being a problem later. Um, see, as you can see, we wiped it all clean so that there's nothing that's going to prevent us from being able to um, have these be nice and flush. So anyway, keep your workspace clean and we'll start up again here in a little bit.
Okay, so this is how far I've gotten so far. And just a little tip, when I ended it last night, I had this brick and this brick and these bricks were not in. It's always best if you try and keep it staggered like this so that you don't have any spots that you're gonna have to cut to fit. Cause that was kind of a bear to get in there, but it looks good. But again, I wouldn't leave anything like, we had this stone here and these down here. It's fitting this one in here was a little tight. So we had to cut it down and we fit it, but it's a little it's a little challenging. And then this one and that one fit just fine. But I had another one down on the other end as well. And I kind of learned my lesson in keeping it straight. So just a little tip. Okay, so right here, this is just a little tip for me to you. Um, as you can see, I'm working on this end of the bar and I've got it stepped like stairs. You can see it's stepping down, which makes it easier because then you don't have to fill things in. But for this section here, I'm gonna be putting in, and you can see that there's a little bit of a gap right there. So my advice is put a spacer in there because what'll happen if you don't, and I found this out the hard way, is that you'll have to grind down the ends to get it to fit. Uh, kind of like I alluded to a little bit earlier, um, you don't wanna leave um, your work area with these types of openings because unless you have a spacer in to be able to allow for that, to be able to pop that back out and then you'll have that correct space in there. Anyway, it'll save you a lot of grinding time and uh, you know shaving down those edges, but just a little tip, thanks. This should be our last day of um, applying stone. We have this little bit on the end and then the part on the top. And as you can see, we're gonna be just a, just a tad too high. If we put this other stone up here, you can see we're just a smidge tall. So we're gonna cut these down one at a time when we go to put them in place. And then we have to finish the other ends and as you can see we're using the rounded ends here to finish it off and we have a little bit of a space because we have our cabinets going in as well so we left a little bit of a space here and we're following this line all the way up and then we'll be able to put our finishing end pieces up against our cabinets which are sitting here waiting to be put into the bar um, once we have all this done we'll do the top part and we'll cut each of those pieces to fit. But as you can see, it's come along pretty nicely. Uh, we used one whole container of glue and I think we've got half of a container left. So stay tuned and we'll show you the finished project. Completely done. And as you can see, it turned out really nice. We used two full buckets of glue with a little bit left over, uh, enough to probably do the backsplash because we'll have a backsplash back here in the back part of the bar. And then we used nine total boxes, and this is what we have left. Three of those boxes were corners, like this one, corners and finished ends. So we still have some corners and finished ends, and then these are all the flaps that we have left, and then these are end pieces and corners.